Recently, one of my students was in the market to buy his first double bass. He did some research and found a couple of instruments locally at a music store. So I offered to go over and look the instruments over and play through them and give him my opinion. I thought it'd be a great opportunity for me to bring my camera and to share with you some of the things I think you should look for when you're purchasing a double bass. Now, by no means is this a definitive guide to buying a double bass, but if you're a student looking to purchase their first upright bass, or maybe you're an electric bassist that's looking to widen your palette and add double bass to your arsenal and you're looking to buy an instrument, I think I can give you some solid advice on finding the right instrument for you. So here are eight things you should definitely be thinking about when you're going to buy a double bass. Number one, you've got to play it before you buy it. I can't emphasize this enough. I'm speaking from experience here. We live in a day and age where almost anything can be purchased and delivered to your house sight unseen. You've got to get your hands on a double bass that you're interested in and thoroughly play it, hopefully more than once before you make any decisions on putting money on the table. Make sure if there's a bass you're interested in, Play it thoroughly before you decide to buy it. Enough said. Number two, thoroughly examine the outside of the instrument. Now you don't necessarily have to be a luthier to identify some major problems with an instrument. Check for open seams. Check that the neck joint is secure with no visible gaps. Check the fit of the end pin. Thoroughly check the body for any cracks, old or new. Check the nut. Check the bridge and give the bass a once over. If something doesn't look right, it might not be. Number three, measure the scale length. Now on your average bass, a playable scale length is somewhere between about 41 inches and maybe around 43 inches from the nut to the bridge. Anything over 43 inches might be a little long to play on in my opinion. Bring a tape measure with you and check the length of the string from the bridge to the nut and make sure it lands somewhere in this sweet spot. By the way, you should know that the most common size for a double bass is three quarters, followed by seven eighths. Number four, take a look inside those F holes. The next time you're looking at a bass, Take your cell phone and use the flashlight to take a peek inside of the F-holes of the instrument. What you'll find most often is a brand label or a repair label that might have more information about the instrument, but you should also inspect the sound post and look inside the body. Are there several cleats from repair work? Is there water spotting or damage inside the base? Any wear or tear is pretty noticeable from an inside an instrument as much as it is from the outside. Number five, listen hard. Play the bass thoroughly. Arco, pizzicato, loud, soft, fast, slow, any way you possibly can. But listen hard for any rattles, buzzes, or sympathetic vibrations you hear while you play. This could be something as simple as tightening a tuner, 
or something more serious, like a nut height that has to be adjusted or an open crack. Listen hard for these extra sounds when you play. It might mean that the bass needs more work than it's actually showing. A little bit of a buzz. Number six, visualize. Remember, we all look for different things with our instruments. Not every bass you play is going to have your ideal strings, your ideal setup. Look for things you can identify regardless of setup. Those things are volume, resonance, weight, ease of play. You can change the strings. You can have the fingerboard planed and or the bridge recut. Pay close attention to the things that can't be fixed and try to imagine it with the setup you intend to have on it. Number seven, get a second opinion. Ask a teacher or another bass player to go and play the bass, or better yet, bring someone else with you to play while you walk around the room and listen to how the bass sounds. Before you fall in love with an instrument, make sure to get some feedback from a teacher, a colleague, a repair person on what they think. It will only help. Number eight, don't sleep on the newer instruments. The number of new build instruments right now in 2021 is higher than it ever has been. The build quality out of some of these bases, especially Chinese instruments and Czech instruments, is higher than it's ever been. I have taught a number of students many on the college level that have brought in Chinese basses by Snow, Shen, and Christopher, and I'm constantly amazed at the high quality of the builds of these instruments, the playability of these instruments, and the sound that comes out of these instruments. Especially for students, a solid, well set up shop bass is a perfect option as a starter instrument. It's true that the older basses often have that sound that you're eventually looking for, but new basses are starting to get close. They're solid, they feel great, and some of them are cannons. Now, as far as price goes, the buy-in on a plywood can come as low as about $1,500, but when you're talking about a hybrid instrument, an instrument that has a carved top, you can double that number. And for a fully carved instrument, we're talking $3,000 or more, depending on the quality of the bass. Just remember three things. Look for a healthy instrument with a good, clean sound and an instrument that is definitely playable. That's a great place to start, and you can always trade up at some point if you wanna move on to a better instrument. Good luck. But lastly, I wanna give a shout out to the fine folks at Volkwines Music who are selling these wonderful instruments on consignment. They were absolutely a delight to work with. They allowed us to film, and they're one of the best music stores in the Pittsburgh area. So if you're around, check them out. Thank you, Volkwines. You know, Stanley Kubrick edited all his movies. That would be assuming you would let me sit at your computer and touch your equipment. This is, this is true. This is awful. Great. Unfortunately, she's not going to let me buy the fresher because I want to buy that fresher. <laughs> You're infuriating.